In this video, we will learn about matplotlib. Matplotlib is one of the most famous library in Python used for data visualization purpose. Our goal for this video is to learn how to plot graph in both functional and object oriented way. Then we will learn how to customize the appearance of graph and each data point on the graph. So stay tuned till the end. To use matplotlib, first we will import matplotlib.pyplot.splt. Then we will write a percent sign and matplotlib inline. This will allow us to see the plots we create inside the Jupyter Notebook itself. First we will go through some simple example using numpy array. So we will import numpy and then we will create one dimensional numpy array with integer value from 1 to 10 using arrange function. And to plot a graph we also need values of y axis. So we will set y equals square of x. Now to plot x versus y graph we use plot method and then we pass our x and y argument. Now we can see our plot of x versus y and if you are using any other IDE of python then you might have to write one extra line to show the plot which is plt.show. We can also customize this plot like changing the color of line or to draw dashed line instead of continuous one. So let's say you want this line to be in green color then just pass string g as third argument and then specify what kind of line you want. If you want dashed line then write double dash and if you want continuous line then write single dash. And you might have noticed that our x and y axis is not labeled yet. So to give it a label we use x label method and then we pass a string we want for our x axis. Similarly use y label method for y axis and to give a title to our plot use title method. Now you can see that our plot appears with both the label and title. Now I will show you how we can create multiple plots in rows and columns format. To show multiple plot we use subplot method and inside this method we pass number of rows as first argument and then number of columns as second argument and the plot number we want to refer as third argument. Then we plot our graph of x versus y with red color. Now to plot the graph on second plot we call subplot method but this time we will refer to plot 2 and then we will plot our x versus x cubed graph with green line. As a result you can see we have one row and two columns of plot where plot 1 shows x versus y graph and plot 2 shows x versus x cubed graph. Now I am going to show you how to plot this graph using object oriented method. In this method first we create an object of figure class. After that we can create an axis using add axis method. This method takes list of 4 arguments. First argument is the margin percentage from left. Second is margin percentage from bottom and then it takes width and height of the axis as the third and fourth argument. Now if you run this then it will show you an empty graph. So to plot our graph on it we use plot method on our axis we created with x and y argument. Now I am going to show you one more example for your better understanding about this list of arguments. And to do so I will create one more axis and I want this axis to have 20% of margin from left, 50% of margin from bottom and 40% of both width and height. And then we will plot x versus y graph on axis 1 and y versus x graph on axis 2. As a result you can see that axis 2 is taking 20% margin with respect to main canvas, about 50% margin from bottom and having width and height of about 40% of entire canvas. Now we will learn how to create subplot using object oriented method and creating an object of subplot returns a tuple. So we need two variables to unpack that tuple. Then we will create object by calling subplot method and just like we did earlier we can specify number of rows and columns we want inside the parenthesis. And you can see that now we have one row and three columns of empty axis. And don't worry about this overlapping I will show you how to fix them in just a moment. So what you are looking at right now is a figure as a whole and each individual graph inside the figure is our axis. So if you print the figure only it will show you all three components of axis it has. And if you look at the axis variable then you will see that it is an array of subplot object. It means that we can select each axis by their index and then we can plot our x and y on it. So we will plot x versus y on first axis, y versus x on second axis and x versus x cube on third axis. And to fix this overlapping we need to call tight layout method and then you will have this nice looking plot without any overlapping. Now I will show you how to give labels to our x and y axis and object oriented method. So first I will create figure object and then we will add an axis to it and this time we will create an array of 50 linearly spaced point from 0 to 7. Then we will plot sign of x on the axis. Now to give it the title we use set title method and similarly to set x and y label we use set x label and set y label method and as a result you can see a smooth curve of sign x with the title and the label we have 
have given to it. In most of the situation, while visualizing a data, you may have to plot multiple curves on a single figure, something like this. And sometimes you might get confused that which line is representing which curve. This is where the legends comes into play. Legend basically helps you to specify each curve on the graph by mapping the color and the label of that curve. So first we need to give a label to both our curve by passing it as an argument inside the plot function. Then to show a legend on the graph, call legend method on the axis. And now you can see a legend on the graph specifying blue curve is representing sine of x and orange curve is representing cosine of x. Now we will learn how to customize the appearance of graph like giving a specific color to the curve, increasing the line width or marking each point on the graph. So first thing I am going to change is the color of our curve. And for that we have to specify the color argument inside the plot method. You can also pass hex code of any color if you want. Now let's say you want to increase the line width then simply pass the LW argument. And if you want to mark the points on the graph then first you need to specify the marker symbol by which you want to mark the points and then you can set the size of that marker. This marker have some other properties as well like marker face color and marker edge color. So if you want you can specify the color for marker face and marker edge. As a result you can see that all the marker point has a purple face and green edge. That's all for this video. From next video we will start working with Seaborn library.